Hello fellow teachers and welcome to my presentation on teaching for diversity, equity and inclusion. Despite an abundance of targeted programs, reforms and curriculum changes, many children who are different in some way are not achieving success at school. In the following presentation, I will discuss three texts used on a recent placement to facilitate a short-term literacy unit. Archie's War, which is a treasure trove organised in a scrapbook through the eyes of a 10-year-old boy. Meet the Anzacs by Claire Saxby, a picture book which shows the individual soldiers and the atmosphere at the time of war. And The Light Horse Boy by Diane Wolfer, telling the story from the perspective of a recruited soldier, his relationship with horses and the enduring impact of war on young Australians. These rich, authentic texts enabled all students to connect with the theme and achieve individual success. The text reflected Fraser's three dimensions of justice, facilitating diversity of perspectives, inclusive learning practices, and equity for all students. Three different versions of the one event encourage students to evaluate a range of perspectives. This aligns with the goals of the Alice Springs Declaration, targeting young Australians to become active and informed members in their communities. As a migrant nation, intercultural perspectives are a priority. And Archie's War is told from the perspective of a primary school age boy living in London during the war. His eclectic scrapbook collection provides insights into the cultural and social impacts through his 10 year old eyes. The perspectives of young soldiers illustrated in Meet the Anzacs depicts a range of young Australian cultures embarking on their separate journeys into war. These viewpoints pave the way for students to see themselves or someone they recognise in these narratives, connecting them to the literacy theme. This created a sociological imagination of how events were for people in that era. Students walked in the shoes of others and generated rich discussions in class. They became active participants in the process of socialisation and I was able to use the cultural experiences and frames of reference to make the learning encounters relevant and effective. Likewise, the texts cater for a range of learning styles with information presented in numerous ways. This broad representation of media and styles supported a participatory parity, overcoming obstacles that traditional texts can present. This allowed students to participate on par with others in social interactions of the literacy theme. According to the Queensland Learning and Wellbeing Framework, this is an important aspect in creating a supportive environment which responds to individual and group differences by promoting collaborative learning. The text acted as a stimulus, creating a community of inquiry among the students. The literature supported the children with their own storytelling, which emerged from their own connections to the artifacts. Students who were unable to experience success previously were now finding themselves in an arena of inclusion. Examples included students connecting with the horses and animals, children playing war games with their friends, and pictures of landmarks in international places. The representative variety in which the texts were communicated allowed students which don't connect to traditional texts to experience success and participate alongside their classmates through the inclusive artifact. With inclusion present, the opportunities for students to develop meaning was possible. It allowed me as a teacher to implement a group strategy for differentiation, which made the teaching of curriculum aspects much more effective. The vertical integration of content lessened the need to have individual learning plans, which can isolate students and be counter-inclusive. Short-term interventions can have detrimental impacts on students and teachers as they often try and fix a learning deficit as opposed to catering for it in a group strategy. Claire Saxby's text developed students' understanding and connection through pictures of men and women who held the same hopes and dreams of young students today. The rich articles in Archie's War Scrapbook similarly develop students' comprehension and links to the theme avoiding a competitive curriculum which usually favours the fast readers. These texts levelled the playing field for students, which prevented disaffection and mitigated language barriers. The assessment of student outcomes was therefore culturally fair. Marginalised students were empowered to reflect with greater purpose and develop their own meaning. In summary, 
It is important to recognize that educators do not need to work longer to achieve success in diverse classrooms. We need to act with agency and deliberately work differently to avoid privileging or marginalizing students. The artifacts discussed allowed the class to experience a literacy unit which ensured equity and access for all. The redistribution of power, the rich representation of learning styles, and the recognitive diversity of perspectives allowed me to achieve ATSL's first standard which supports full participation for all students. Thank you.